Hello, my name is Andre, and right now at this very moment, I'm going to be reading you the gospel of today. The gospel today is Luke 16, 19 to 31. And we're doing this gospel reading differently in a form of prayer that is called the Lexio Divina. And for those that don't know what that is, I'll happily explain. The Lexio Divina is a form of prayer that consists of four different parts. Lexio meaning to read, meditatio meaning to meditate, oratio meaning to pray, and contemplatio meaning to contemplate. And at this moment, I'd like to invite you to take a few deep breaths, and if you may, to close your eyes and relax. For we are going to ask the Holy Spirit to come to this prayer, to this reading, and to us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Educate us to pray. Father, we are open to whatever message you like our ears to hear today. We pray with this time with you bears fruit of wisdom and understanding and love. Now I'm going to read the gospel of today. And all I ask for you is to listen. There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would have gladly have eaten his fills of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established, who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg of you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Take this time to recall whatever stood out to you, what words bear fruit of understanding and wisdom that God is calling you to hear. And ask Jesus, what is he trying to make you understand with this passage? Now, I'm going to read it once more. And I ask of you to listen and to also focus on what stood out. And to also ask yourself, in this situation, are you Lazarus or the rich man? There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill off the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man 
also died and was buried. And from the nether world where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father, Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that they, he, may warn them, lest they come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father, Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and not the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Now, take this moment to remember what you've read, to what stood out, and to keep asking and praying to Jesus, what are you trying to make me understand with these words? And what are these lessons Jesus might be trying to teach us in this parable about wealth or death? There was a rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, My child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone from crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, Then I beg of you, Father, send to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, Oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Friends, today's gospel focuses on the parable of the rich man 
and Lazarus. The rich men dressed in purple garments and fine linen and dined sumptuously each day. While lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. God is not pleased with this kind of economic inequality, and he burns with passion to set things right. This theme came roaring up out of the Bible and into the Christian tradition, and it echoes up and down the centuries. Even though it makes us uncomfortable, and God knows it does, especially of those who live in the most affluent society in the world. We can't avoid it because it's everywhere in the Bible. St. Thomas says that we must distinguish between ownership and the use of private property. We have a right to ownership through our hard work, through our inheritance. Fair enough. But with the regard to the use of those things, how we use them, and why we use them, then says Thomas, we must always be concerned first for the common good and not our own. This especially includes Lazarus. At our gates, those who are suffering and most in need. Now I ask of you to join me in closing prayer. Father, we are grateful for this time. We are thankful for your word. We pray for these words to be engraved in our hearts and to echo in our thoughts for the rest of the days and the days on ahead. May your grace follow each of us as we return to our daily lives, refreshed and blessed by you. We ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for listening.